One must learn to surrender. I've realized that living is not about remembering a city, a moment, a face, even if they were the most beautiful in the world. To move forward, one must learn to forget. What sense does it make to write poetry if the poems are written on walls? The walls speak. Not only that, the entire Paris speaks. Or rather, it begins by whispering and then chokes in a scream. Jeanne has nothing immensely tragic about her. Hers is a modest resignation, living every day, trying to move forward, trying in vain to erase the memory of Jeanne, to exercise that name so similar to his. When Jean leaves, he realizes he would rather be dead than far from her. Yes, because Jean left and then died in the outskirts of Lyon without her knowing anything about him. Wall engravings is poetry on film. We see Jean and Jeanne for the first time in a venue the Au Pan Coupé. Gilles falls in love with it and wishes to shoot the film there, making it the focal point of the entire story. The owner of the place refuses. 20 years earlier, he had allowed the filming of a movie with Charles Trenet. It was a disaster. Gilles, though, doesn't want to abandon the allure, that specific attraction. He decides to film, at least, only the exteriors. The introspection of Jeanne begins. Au Pan Coupé becomes the quintessential place for their last meetings. Before Jean arrives, Jean gazes out the window. Inside the venue, two elderly women gossip about a woman on the street, motionless and with a gaze lost beyond the venue's window. They say she is a singer, married twice with an ungrateful daughter. She is considered mad. Jean observes. We don't know it yet, but she is only thinking about Jean's return from work at the construction site. She doesn't know the meaning of that woman, who has now reduced herself to singing by the window. Jean is lost in his thoughts. He speaks, tries to communicate his feelings, often without success. His are enigmatic sentences, fragments of existentialist poetry. He tries to fight fear by translating his soul into words the lack of communication. Jean is not a man of words, but of actions. His surrender to a sudden embrace is worth more than a thousand words. Holding Jeanne close, Kissing her in a modest, almost chaste way is a way to heal. It's Jeanne who says that she loves him even in his silences. Jeanne is with her, but perpetually with himself. The secret of her love lies in patience and admiration. Jeanne would like to be innocent, to definitively escape his past. Theirs is an impossible love, crystallized in holding hands in Opan Coupé. In the background, the music of Jean-Pierre Stora. Gilles' cousin. There are no black flowers. This is the opening line of the film. The passionate love for botany pervades the entire movie. When Jean and Jeanne talk about plants, flowers, an intimate and contemplative moment is created. The colors of nature reign not only visually, but also with the sound of words. There is a conviction to believe that Jean is that black flower, impossible to find. Three months after that handshake, Jean disappears. He runs away without a trace. He joins a group of beatniks, but Jean does not consider himself defeated. He 
who has always wanted to change the world without knowing how and what to do. It's summer, but the cold persists. Fever weakens him. He dies in the outskirts of Leon, found by an early morning worker. An off-screen voice intervenes. Jeanne will not know about his death. His death, however, is peaceful. No signs of aggression, just his gaze to the sky and arms around his neck, as if they were her arms. A face full of sweetness, perhaps realized only at the end. Jean is like a flower without water. Nothing can be done. Jeanne talks with a friend, Pierre. Pierre loves her, but she still only thinks of Jeanne. For Marguerite Duras, it is, in any case, a love film. A love interrupted by departure, by death. Boy meets girl, man meets woman, nothing else and everything else. Jeanne is enchanted. She cannot fully understand the pain that grips Jean. His expressiveness is enigmatic. The two, not only in name, resemble each other in features. Their physical similarity is an additional, even more indissoluble bond. A sometimes expressionless mask. That scar on Jean's nose gives him the air of a wayward boy, a victim also of violence. His is a lost gaze, at times icy, balanced by her gaze. Do you know that in Malaysia, there are plants and flowers that grow in just a few minutes? Jeanne, have you ever noticed? There are no black flowers. In this sentence, the entire film is condensed. The sudden blooming of love, without announcements or premonitions. An instantaneous and inexplicable will. Acknowledging the beauty of the flower without questioning its origin, its growth in unknown territories and remaining hidden from the eyes of many, almost a legend capable of capturing the viewer's attention. And these flowers, capable of growing in such a short time, are not black. There are no black flowers. It's not wrong or reprehensible. Love is also not planning. Indeed, it is mostly surprise, wonder, the film remains anchored, tenacious like ivy. Jeanne, in complete solitude, looks out the window of the desolate apartment. In the garden below, an old woman, dressed in all black and alone. She looks like a widow sitting on a bench. The wedding ring distinctly shines on her finger. Jeanne, independent of Jean's death, is like a widow, ready to talk to photographs, paintings depicting her beloved. Jeanne, please keep on loving. Passage de la